Hey, y'all, and welcome into an, another edition of the Nolcast. I'm Bud Elliott here with your instant reaction after Florida State falls 28 to 14 at the hands of NC State. Uh, of course, if they lose, it's not a Winston reaction. It's not nearly as fun. Uh, this result was, I would say, expected, uh, but still uh, painful. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. I think there are some scenarios how this game plays out where FSU maybe is able to make it a little closer, and then there are some also some scenarios where NC State uh, probably blows FSU out uh, by more than just two touchdowns. Uh, going over my notes here, the biggest thing in this game by far, uh, in which you were outgained by 63% per play and 140 yards. So, yeah, I mean, 14 points really does indicate how the game was not really very close, uh, although I'll get into how FSU made it competitive for about like a 15-minute stretch, which was awesome. They fought hard. This team really doesn't have any quit in it, and they were just not in a position. First of all, they don't have better players in NC State, so that hurts. Uh, I thought they outcoached at NC State in this game in large part, and yet they were not able to overcome the virus that swept through Tallahassee that canceled the swim meet, that canceled the, the, the baseball scrimmage. And it kept your best player, Jordan Travis, or best offensive player, rather, out of this game. And ultimately, that just that kind of doomed you. Uh, we've seen how this offense operates when anybody else is operating it. And uh, we've seen how it operates when Jordan Travis is in. When Jordan is in, people start thinking that Trayshawn Ward and, and Sean Corbin are going to be first-round picks at running back, right? The offensive line looks totally different. All the angles are changed for the run game. And FSU is able to hit some explosive plays. When Mackenzie Milton is in, they can't run the ball. He doesn't have a good arm, so he's not able to drive the ball down the field very well. Everybody sits on it. They they realize, hey, like unless you let him lollipop it over the top, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, FSU will make a mistake or two because their offensive line is not that good or their receiver will run, run a wrong route or just not be able to get open against coverage underneath, and we can take away the run without having to, to really outnumber you in the box. And uh, you know that is kind of what NC State was able to do in this game. So I, I will start there. I mean, just the the lack of being able to practice this week because of who you had out. We we covered this in the instant or, or in the uh, the preview podcast. And, um, you know, I, I think that I think that hurt these guys. I, it also I think if you look at what happened in the second half, most likely I think it it hurt their ability to come out with a, with a better game plan in the first half because they weren't really sure how these guys are going to work together and what they had. I, mean, I know Milton got to practice at least one day, but not a whole lot of practice this week. So anyway, uh, 271 yards of offense. Um, you know, 39 of that is also is on that final drive when you're down two scores and, and you're, you're not going to come back with, with that amount of time left. Uh, 3.8 yards per play. Ultimately, uh, just not a competitive offensive effort here. Mackenzie Milton, uh, poor game overall, 22 of 44 for uh, for 233. QB rating of less than 100, which on the college scale is not very good. One touchdown, one pick. You know, that's just not really going to get it done. Um, you know, that's, yeah, what what is 233? What is 44 into 233? 5.3 per attempt. Uh, that's just, that's not... It's not really a competitive effort. However, you were much better there uh, throwing the football than you were running the football. Uh, running the football, FSU, uh, was just dreadful. Uh, three yards per carry if you remove the sacks. Milton was sacked, was he sacked four times, I think, on the night for a loss of 40 yards. So, and that's disappointing there. Uh, but the run game without Jordan in there is not the same thing at all. Um, teams do not have to respect McKenzie Milton's legs, and they're able to key more on the backs and they also don't have to devote quite as few people down into the box to stop it because they're again they don't they're not scared of, of Milton's uh, legs there and this is not to, to crap on Milton obviously like he's not the starter for a reason you know he's he's just a diminished product from what he was at UCF and, and he's out there trying his best and in the first half you, you could tell they were trying to run some of their run game stuff and Certainly, I don't think you trust this team to be a great dropback team, given the receivers and, and tight end situation that it has right now. But NC State said, hey, uh, 
we want to see you if you can throw the ball on us because we're not going to let you just come out here run the ball like you've been doing recently. And in that first half, just complete domination there from the Wolfpack defense. Um, zero points for FSU, 78 total yards, 2.8 yards per play in the first half. Uh, completed the ability to run the ball. NC State came away and said, hey, we're going to take away the run, see if you can throw. And FSU uh, did not have a good counter for that in the first half. Now, I will note a couple other things. Uh, in the second half, I thought they came out. They made some nice adjustments. They went a lot more to the quick passing game, which worked for a couple series. It did not, like they weren't dominant in the second half, but they were better in the second half moving the football. I mean, 4.5 yards of play in the second half compared to 2.8 in the first. I mean, 4.5 yards of play is not good, but it's it's better than 2.8, you know, four. 4.5 yards play maybe gives you a chance to hang around if you catch a bunch of breaks. But um, NC State did make some adjustments to that, it, and it was really mostly the, the, the third quarter where, um, where FSU was getting NC State with some of that quick passing stuff. Some of those quick hitters, some of those switch routes, they, they worked pretty well. 191 yards there uh, through three quarters, 113 in, in the uh, third quarter alone. So you had, you had more yards in the third quarter than you did in the entire first half tonight. And you, you kind of swung the game there. NC State came out, and your defense played better, I thought, in the second half than it did in the first. In the first half, you uh, – I'm not going to say you played terribly because, honestly, like, think about what NC State has done in other games. They, they've had a lot of games where they've had 6.5 yards of play, and that's what they had tonight before they started taking all the kneel downs. So I don't really have a huge problem with what the defense did. Now you can say, hey – I mean, two long touchdowns, poor tackling, which I think is uncharacteristic of this defense. For the most part, they have been a good tackling defense this year. Uh, they continue to play, I think, on the vast majority of plays with good effort. I, I didn't see guys quitting. You know, Akeem Dent overruns the ball carrier on the one play that, that goes for a touchdown. But was that him giving poor effort, or did he just play it with poor technique and, and a poor angle? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, the offense, you really lost this game because the offense was so damn bad in the first half. You didn't score any points in the first half. And you you didn't, it wasn't like you were unlucky. You just didn't have any ability to move the football. The other thing, as I mentioned, uh, is without Jordan in there, teams are just not going to take risks against you. There's just no need to do so. And you have to be extremely creative in how you call plays in order to try to, to create explosives. And even sometimes when, you, when you're that creative, Still may not work. Uh, and in this case, Jordan or Jordan Travis is not in there. FSU had only two plays of 25-plus yards today and no plays of 40. We have spoken every single week about how this is an offense that absolutely depends on the explosive play. It's all about explosive play, explosive play, explosive play, because they do not have the capability uh, you know, to drop back and be a precision offense. And that's with Jordan or without Jordan. Certainly more – with Jordan, I would say, uh, but ultimately, it's a problem either way. Um, NC State did not allow them to to hit the ball over the top for the most part, and they were extremely efficient in how they made FSU grind out games. That's not something FSU is capable of doing at this point, especially not with with, with the team that was getting over the flu and and were pretty exhausted at points this week. Uh, so that that is that is certainly challenging. Anyway, uh, a couple more things I want to go over here. Just not a good job on first down. To They were consistently in second and long, third and long. That's not really going to work. Success rate in the game, I believe, of 30%. So uh, not particularly good there. Receivers actually had an okay day somewhat. I mean, Keyshawn Hilton, six targets for 49 is is okay. Uh, Andrew Parchment, nine targets for 45 is, is a – not a good effort, uh, but okay. Malik McLean caught a, caught a couple of balls. Ultimately, if you're 22 of 44, you're having a lot of passes that go incomplete. So, you know that can be that can be tough. Final thing I want to talk about here is the uh, the decision to go for it on fourth and four, down a touchdown with eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Um, I actually put put this into the database with the exact specs right how well your team had been playing to that point, what the spread is in the game, 
what the over under is in the game, which factors in, of course, team quality, right? Um, how well you've been playing so far today is, is the other important factor in that. That goes in there too. How many timeouts you have left, how many timeouts the opponent has left, et cetera. And FSU went for it. They did not get it. Uh, it was the correct call, though. Uh, and it wasn't just like one of those toss up things. So punting there in that situation, according to the model, which again does factor in stuff like, hey, you don't have Jordan Travis in there. Um, 15% winning probability if you punt, 17% chance if you go. That's not if you go and make it, that's just if you go. So obviously that factors in if you don't get it. That's tough, but keep in mind, it's not like you were really stopping NC State all that much. I think we tend to overrate things like, oh, the, the last two times, the last two drives, we got stops. That, that, there's a huge amount of noise in that, ultimately. And that's, to me, focusing on the larger sample set is, is going to make a lot more sense there. And it, it is fine to factor in certain things like how you've been playing. But, I mean, NC State was moving the ball at 6.5 yards a clip at that point. You weren't really getting stops. Uh, although, in fairness, you could say NC State had a, a large portion of their stuff tonight on chunk place, which is you know, that's that's also fair. All right, I want to take some time here in the interaction to thank our sponsors. Louisiana Hot Sauce makes everything better. Tarpon Cellars, check out Tarpon Cellars Winery. Great gifts for the holiday season coming up. Legendary Home Loans Team, 844-FSU Loan, 844-FSU Loan. And Congruity for all of your HR and payroll solutions. Uh, make sure you, you follow us on YouTube. Turn those notifications and subscription on. And yeah, uh, we will talk more about the fourth down stuff on the next uh, next show because I want to go ahead and pull all of them. For instance, the decision to punt on fourth and 10 uh, was actually uh, an interesting one and one that was uh, basically a coin flip by the model. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go to the defensive side of the football here. This is going to be a little bit, little bit shorter. First, I think FSU and Adam Fuller should probably write a little note to NC State thanking them for running the ball as much as they did tonight. That was uh, a little bit crazy. Even removing the kneel downs tonight, uh, they had 34 carries for 98 yards. It's really not going to get it done. Uh, 18 for 75 from Zonovan Knight, 10 for 28 from Ricky Person. That, that's just not really a great use of resources. Very low success rate for them running the football this evening. And FSU's defensive strength by far is stopping the run. All right, uh, I'm back. Hopefully the stream uh, stayed okay. If not, I'll have to figure out some editing on this post. Anyway, uh, I think what I was talking about there was, and I have sketchy internet, I'm traveling for work. Um, NC State really got all it wanted throwing the ball tonight, and it just elected to keep trying to run and run and run against a really good FSU run defense. And if NC State had just committed to chucking the ball around a little bit more, they could have probably scored like 40 or 35. So, Maybe send a Christmas card to offensive coordinator Tim Beck for NC State for uh, just keep trying to establish that run when passing is more efficient if you do it well, and they certainly do it really well there. Uh, anyway, uh, on a down-to-down -down basis, FSU was actually not that bad on defense. Um, that's why it's important to look at both success rate and explosiveness. On a success rate basis, uh, let me see if I can pull this. On a success rate basis, NC State had a success rate of 25, which is terrible. Now, if you back out uh, the, the kneel downs, then it's going to be obviously a little bit higher uh, than that, you know, more in the 30s. But still, they're, how, how they were good on offense tonight, they had 400 yards. 257 of those yards came on just nine plays. Uh, nine plays is... Not that much, but they count. Those plays count. And when you give up explosive plays like this defense does, that counts. I totally understand what FSU was trying to do there. They're, I'm sure they're trying to, you know, quote-unquote, force turnovers and 
take some risk because it became pretty pretty obvious that she was not going to score a whole lot of points in this ball game. And I understand that. I think that's that's fine. Uh, poor tackling tonight, like I said, uncharacteristic poor tackling for the most part. This has been a good tackling defense this season, uh, but not tonight on some of the more explosive plays. And ultimately, Leary just carved you up. I mean, 21 of 32 for 314, four touchdowns, uh, a quarterback rating of 183.1. Um, that's just that's that's too that's too many explosive plays to allow in this case, and that's disappointing, uh, but not not entirely surprising. I thought they would lose 31-20. They lost 28 to 14. Um, I guess the well, I don't know. I don't have a ton of defensive gripes in this game. They didn't play great. They you know, they they've had other other teams allow six point five yards of play at NC State pre kneel down. I think that's probably fine, right? Like that's not that big of a deal. However, the only real gripe I have is that you, you should be a pretty good red zone defense with with the size that you have, right? And FSU only forced NC State into the red zone one time tonight. So I guess from that perspective, if you allow all these explosive plays, you never get anybody down to the tight area with a little more bend on break and, and force them, you know, to to execute in that tight area and to be physical. Because FSU was the more physical defense tonight against NC State's offensive line. They did a really nice job. They they were pretty physical themselves, and yet those explosive plays were, were just backbreakers for a team that's just not going to score very many points when it has McKenzie Milton uh, back there instead of Jordan Travis. And I'm not saying that, that Jordan Travis would have scored a ton of points on NC State either. Obviously, I didn't pick them to score that many points. Uh, last week, Louisville, which has a mobile quarterback and a, a similar uh, lack of receiver talent and not much of a real passing game, they, they, they rely pretty much on explosive plays as well. Uh, NC State did a good job of bottling them up, and I—that's a good NC State team. I think I—I I, I don't think FSU fans should should hang their head about this one too much. To be, to be frank, guys, um, you know, I, I, NC State was my dark horse, like my non-Clemson pick to win the conference. And I don't know if they will because I think a, a team that can really throw the ball around can probably chuck it on those guys fairly well. Uh, that's not really FSU, quite obviously. We'll see how that goes. Um, but that's a good football team. I think given the circumstances, there's no shame in losing by two scores to NC State at home with what happened to you this week with the flu and, and, and not having your best player on offense. Uh, you can also say, hey, NC State was missing several starters on defense, I think four or five. And that's true. But uh, they don't have a brand new you know, head coach who has taken over a roster. It's been pr pretty, pretty wrecked by attrition. We'll see if these guys keep fighting. Uh, I will point out today that Miami did beat Georgia Tech at home. That is the next game, and that's that's tough. By the way, uh, I want to want to note like um, they they really have their explosive pass game going right now in, in a in a major way. So I'm I'm pretty impressed by that. And I don't know, man. Uh, We'll, we'll see. Uh, th that final score, I will note, does not really – it's not super indicative of how that game was played. If you want a funky box score, so check this out. Uh, Miami had 560 yards of offense. Georgia Tech had 326. And yet Miami won the game by three because they had just some absolutely crazy turnover luck in this ballgame. It happens, but uh, Tyler Van Dyke, 22 of 34 for 389. It, in a weird way, Derek King getting hurt may have actually, I don't say saved Manny Diaz's job, but it certainly helps Manny Diaz's job security that the backup quarterback is that much better than Derek King was. And they're, they're finding ways to chuck the ball all over the field, and that receiving core all of a sudden doesn't look you know, quite as underachieving as it has looked in recent years. Anyway, we will preview the heck out of that game coming up, and I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks.